Welcome and welcome back to LJC Crafts. Today we will be doing something a little bit different and we will be crocheting a little square. As you can see, I didn't weave the ends in yet, but in this video I will be showing you how to do that. And what you will need to crochet your square is some yarn of your choice. This is just a teal color I'm using here, a crochet hook. Uh, one that goes for the size yarn you're using. I'm using a five milliliter hook because that's what the yarn says to use. You're gonna need scissors and a needle, a crochet needle of any kind, a metal one or a plastic one will work. And if you don't have a needle, you can either just leave the ends out like this if you really want, you can cut them, or I'm going to show you a way you can use for your hook just in case you don't have a needle. So first we're going to start off with a chain and to make the first loop we're going to get two pieces of the string, it's all attached, we're going to make a loop by twisting that putting your thumb in and then grabbing either end and pulling tight. As you can see, you have a little loop there. And if you get your hook, put it in the loop. And if you pull the string, you have your first loop. And now you can start chaining up. So to chain up, the way you want to hold the yarn is very important. So you're going to want to get it in your hand. What I like to do is I like to wrap my pointer finger around it and then just let my other ones hold it like that. And then I just like to hold right there where the knot is and then you get your crocheting hook, you wrap underneath the yarn and you pull through that little loop right there. And then you do the same thing. So you go under, you grab the yarn, and you pull it through the loop. Just zoomed in a little so you can see. And the first thing we're gonna wanna do is make the first little loop. So you're gonna wanna grab two pieces Put your pointer finger in, upside down, twist it over, bring your thumb in, and you can grab either piece of string, doesn't really matter. We should have this little loop there now. If you grab your crocheting hook and stick it in the loop, and you pull the string, you should have this on your hook, <coughs> like that. Now, holding the yarn. Holding the yarn is very important. What I like to do is I like to put the yarn in between these three fingers, and then I like to wrap it around my pointer finger, and then I like to get these two fingers and hold right here where the knot is so it doesn't come undone. Like that. So my hand looks like that when I hold the yarn. Once you're holding the yarn, you can either hold your crochet hook in knife position or in a pencil position. I prefer holding it like a knife, but it all depends on what you prefer. Now we are going to start chaining up. You can chain up any number you like. I will be chaining up five. So to chain up, you're going to want to go into your yarn, twist, grab it over, and go into the loop, just like that. Same thing, go in and pull through. And you can do that as many times as you like. To know how many loops you have, 
you can simply look at the little V's here and count them. So I've chained up five. You can do as many times as you like though. Now we will be doing a half double crochet for this. So a half double crochet is when you yarn over, then you go into the second loop here. So we're gonna skip the first loop and go into the second one. Grab the yarn and pull it through. You should have three loops on your hook. And then you're gonna yarn over again and pull through all three loops. Like that, and you're gonna do that all the way down. So again, yarning over, going into the next loop, grabbing the yarn, should have three loops, and bringing yarn through all three loops. Yarning over, going into the next loop. Yarning over, pulling through all three loops. Once you're done, you should have something that looks like this. This is the first row. You can go on as many rows as you like. I will be doing five by five, therefore it is an even square. Now, once you're done, you're gonna wanna turn it over like that. And then you're gonna wanna chain up two. One. and then we're gonna do the same thing in each loop so we're gonna yarn over we're gonna go into the first loop grab the string should have three loops on our hook yarn over and pull that through all three loops and again doing that in each loop Yarning over, going into the next loop, grabbing the string, yarning over, and pulling through all three loops. Yarning over, going in the next loop, yarning over. Should have three loops. Yarn over and pull through all three loops. Yarn over, go in the next loop, grab the string. Should have three loops. Yarn over, pull through all three loops. Yarn over, go into the next loop, grab the yarn, you should have three loops, yarn over, and pull through all three loops. Now you've done the, the next row. We're gonna flip it over, chain up two, and do the same thing all over again. Now we have two rows, and just so you know how many rows you're doing, you can either write it down on a piece of paper, or what I forgot to mention in the beginning is you can use a row counter. So this is a row counter, and what it does is it has a bunch of numbers on it, 
and you can turn the little things at the side to change the number. So you can't really see it, but this side says 5, this side says 2, and practically I need 5 rows, or that's how many rows I want to do. And I have 2, and every time I do a row, I'm going to turn this side, and now it's 3. Or maybe I want to do 7 rows, I'll change that side to 7. This is not necessary, you can simply write it down on a piece of paper. If you prefer to use that, you can go ahead. Now we're going to chain up two. So every time we start a new row, we're going to turn our work over. So we were like this, I turned it over. And we're going to chain up two, so yarning over and pulling through the loop. Yarning over, pulling through the loop. Chain up two, yarn over, going to your first little loop, yarn over, three loops, yarn over, pull through all three loops. Oops. Yarn over into the next loop, rubbing the string, should have three loops, yarn over, pull through all three loops. And again, we're going to do this for the next row, all and all the loops, yarn over, go into the next loop, yarn over, should have three strings on your hooks, or three loops, yarn over, pull through all three, yarn over, go into the next loop, yarn over, pull through, should have three loops, yarn over, and pull that through all three loops, yarn over, go into the next loop, Yarn over, pull through, should have three loops, and pull through all three. Now we have three rows. Now for the next row, we're going to turn our work over, we're going to chain up two again, Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, go into the next loop, yarn over, pull through, should have three loops, yarn over, pull through all three loops. At this point, you should start to get the hang of it. And you should be able to do it on your own. Row four. Turn it the other way. Chain two, yarn over, into the next loop, should have three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three. And again, do that in every single loop. That was row 5, so now we should have our square 
Now we can just pull the yarn on a loop, creating a huge loop, get our scissors, and leave yourself a good amount of string, and cut the yarn. Now this loop here, we're going to pull the one side and pull the yarn through and pull tightly to secure. Now you can leave it like this and cut this piece of string a little bit shorter, but if you would like to weave in the end, you can stay. Now this is where you need a needle. If you don't have a needle, that is okay. You can use your hook. It is a little bit harder and it might not turn out as nice, but that's okay. So if you want to use your crocheting hook, you just want to get underneath a few of these little loops here in the rows. So get in between them, not underneath them. You want to go in between them. Once you've gone in between a few, you're going to want to grab your string, put it on your crocheting hook, and you're going to want to try to pull it through all those loops. Once you have it pulled through, it should have looked something like this. You don't have to pull through all of them. As you can see, I left two loops alone, and it looks like that. It doesn't leave that much of a difference. Then, what you do here is you get your scissors, Cut that and you can't even see it. And you can just throw this piece of string away. If you do have a needle, and the proper name is actually a darning needle, um, but I'm just gonna call it a crocheting needle, you're gonna wanna put the string through the needle. Then you're going to want to do the same thing by going underneath these loops and just bringing the yarn through. The needle just makes it easier. Once it's few, it's through a few. You can cut this string. And then you have your little square which you can use as a sample or with this square you can choose to make yours a bit bigger and you can use it as a towel or you can use this technique to make a blanket. There are so many other crochet stitches that you can do. Today I showed you a half double crochet but there are so many more. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. And if you liked it, make sure you hit that like button. And if you want to see me again, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye!